Have you ever taken two Cisco devices, put like four or five or six links between them, and then been frustrated when you realize only one link is being utilized? Well, in this episode of What the Pros Know here at IT Pro TV, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna take a look at ether channel technology that'll allow you to bundle those links together, but we're also gonna get a look at the NXOS, that's the next generation operating system from Cisco Systems. So here we are in the wonderful CML product, and don't forget, if you need help with CML, Ronnie Wong has a great hands-on course for you waiting at IT Pro TV. But I'm in my Cisco modeling labs, and here you can see I've got a couple of Nexus 9Ks, and it looks like they're connected with one big link, but sure enough, uh, that is four different links. In fact, let's confirm that and then let's bundle them together in an ether channel. So we're gonna slide over here to that first NXOS device and I'm gonna do show interface status. And you can see that ethernet one slash one through one slash six have connectivity here in our topology, but it is specifically one slash one through one slash four that are connected to the other NXOS device. So let's bundle those together in an ether channel. Now we said introduction to this NXOS and it starts right away. And that's because of the fact that we would not necessarily have all of the protocols installed by default on the NXOS. For instance, what I'd like to demonstrate is utilizing the link aggregation and control protocol in order to dynamically form this ether channel between these two devices. And sure enough, the link aggregation and control protocol is not even installed by default on the NXOS. I kind of love that, don't you? You talk about a small attack surface, many of these services don't even exist. You have to add them if you want to use them. So we're gonna go into global configuration mode. That's still there, our old friend on the NXOS. And I'm gonna say feature LACP. And it is gonna tell me, okay, we will install the link aggregation and control protocol feature that you want to utilize. Wonderful. Now I am going to reference those four interfaces that we want to bundle together in one big ether channel. And to remind you of why, let me do this and watch this cool thing about the NXOS. I can do my show commands without requiring the do command when I'm in some kind of sub mode. So right here in global configuration, I'm gonna say show spanning tree uh, for let's say VLAN one. And what you see is on this device, all of the ports, those four ports, one slash one through one slash four that we're interested in, they're all in a forwarding state. And that's because this is the root bridge of the spanning tree topology. But if we slide over to this device and I do my show spanning tree for VLAN one, you're going to see that three of those four ports are in the blocking state. So we didn't do ourselves any big advantage there other than redundancy if the forwarding link should fail, but we're not getting the cumulative effect of those four links. That's what Ether Channel can do for us. It can bundle those together, make it look like one big link between these Nexus devices, and that's just a wonderful thing. So I'm gonna go back to this device right here where we were initiating our configuration, and I'm gonna say interface E1 slash one dash four. I wanna configure all four of those interfaces together. And notice how they simplified this inside the NXOS. I no longer have to say interface range. In fact, that com command doesn't even exist. 
You just say ethernet and then you specify the syntax for the range that you want to configure. So what we're gonna do next is something that I do because I'm very, very particular about this. I shut those interfaces down. Now, the reason why I am doing that is a carryover really from the iOS environment where I have seen it where if I configure LACP on one side and those links are active, and let's say there's PAGP automatically set up on the other side by default on that device, we get this mismatch and we get all of this chaos. So I'm kind of stuck old school here of, okay, let's shut these interfaces down, make our config, make a compatible config on the other side and then bring them up. You could definitely argue that I'm being overly cautious in this NXOS environment, since we know that like PAGP cannot be installed on the other side, but just bear with me the way I do it, right? So I've got these interfaces shut down and now I'm gonna say channel group, we'll pick a locally significant channel group identifier. I'm gonna use one here. And then we say mode, and notice we have three options. We have on, we have active, and we have passive. On is the mode to statically configure the trunk, to say, look, you are trunking no matter what. And then active and passive is kind of like auto and desirable that we have in a PAGP, a port aggregation protocol environment. PAGP is an older way to dynamically form your uh, ether channels, and it's really legacy. Cisco themselves doesn't even offer it on many switches these days. So we want to stick with LACP as the configuration approach here. So on this side, I will say that this side is passive. So this side is not going to actively try and form an ether channel, but it will respond if the neighboring device does. Well, that's it, couldn't be much easier than that. Oh, one really important thing though, you would wanna go in and you would wanna look at the running configuration on all of your interfaces and you would wanna make sure that running configuration, that, that config under those interfaces is all consistent. So I might say like, okay, all of these interfaces are switch ports. And that's so funny, you better do this up front because it's not gonna be allowed as you can see once you bundle them together. So let's just go in and make sure all four of those interfaces are like twins in their configuration or quadruplets, whatever four identical objects is called. And once those are all identical in their configs, then bundle them together. Wow, glad I remembered to mention that. It's hugely important. All right, so we're gonna cross our fingers that they're all identical, and then we're gonna go over to the other side here, and we're gonna do feature, LACP, very easy to forget to install the feature. We're not used to doing that in the iOS world. And then we're gonna say interface E1 slash one, two, four, and we're gonna get into that range of interfaces and we'll say channel group mode, uh, channel group one mode, and we're gonna do active on this side as we said we would. All right, that's done. Only thing left to do now is slide back over to the original device we were working on and no shut those four interfaces and then do our verifications that we have used the link aggregation and control protocol in order to bundle our four ethernet links together. So the first verification that I'm gonna do is while it's fresh in our minds, let's do that show spanning tree for VLAN one again, and look at that. Holy port channel, Batman. There is now just one link representing all four of those links inside this device and it's forwarding. And of course, if we go over and we run the show spanning tree VLAN one over here, come on, where are you? I saw you, there you are, command. 
Notice this is that one forwarding link between these two devices. Now, that's the roundabout way at verifying this. The more direct method is show port channel and then I like to do summary so that we are not overwhelmed with the amount of information that we get. Let's take a look here. There is a port channel group identifier of one. Uh-huh, I set that. And then it says port channel one, SU. SU, is that like South Carolina University? I don't know what that is. So let's decode SU. And notice it's a capital S because there is a small s here in the legend. So this is saying that it is switched. Ah, good, I got lucky. All of those ports were in layer two mode. And then a big capital U for up in the port channel. Woohoo! SU is exactly what we wanted to see there. Then it says you're dealing with an ether channel. And then it says the link aggregation and control protocol was used to form this. Awesome. And then it gives me the four member ports. And each of those member ports has a capital P, which is also good news for us. It means that that port is up and participating in the port channel. So we have done it. We have gone to some next generation equipment from Cisco Systems and we have installed the link aggregation and control protocol. We have then safely bundled together four of our ethernet links, making them look like one big bountiful amount of bandwidth to these devices and that's a great thing. And we have tricked the underlying spanning tree protocol into thinking it's just one link. And then of course it does the forwarding across all of those links. I wanna thank you so much for joining me in this episode of What the Pros Know right here at IT Pro TV. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel because you're not gonna to wanna to miss one of these videos from myself or the other edutainers that I work with every day at IT Pro TV. You might also wanna hit the little bell so that you get notified when we post something new. Thanks so much again for joining me here in this episode of What the Pros Know at IT Pro TV.